bait used to be believable. Looking at some of the comments in here. That's what you've been cooking up for two days? And now do you clip your toenails or do you peel them off in the shower? Come on. Bait used to be believable. That's all I'm going to say. Back when I was like, yes, I don't know, I 12, 13, nails. I would also sit, hi, my name is Matt. I would sit on the shower and I would bend over and I would bite my toenails off and I would just like I'm fucking. It's so like I follow green text reposter on Twitter and sometimes there's some great green text. Today, green text reposter posted a green text repost. And it was about how like a guy got his girlfriend pregnant to the Pizza Tower soundtrack. And I was like, this shit did not fucking happen, bro. Come on. This is... And the it's always phrased as if it's like a PSA. It's like, be careful out there, bros. And I'm like, you're making this shit up. You're playing with dolls right now, man. You did not impregnate your girlfriend to the Pizza Tower soundtrack. It's ridiculous. No, I do. Do I believe that there's some degenerates out there that are fucking into the Pizza Tower soundtrack on occasion? Yeah, absolutely. I do not believe if that really happened, you would never tell anybody about it. You would hide that from everybody forever. Or you're like, I don't know, like 15 years old. Yeah, okay, all right. What, you know what do British people say when they're like really mad at somebody? They're gonna kill them. They say like, on your bike then. Get on, get on your bike then, or whatever. You... Did you see that British guy on the podcast who claimed he knocked out Mike Tyson in a bar fight in like 2008? Yeah, Andre, they all come and they're looking around. I don't know what I was looking for. Looking behind the curtains, I thought, what are you looking for? I spit over the top. With that, I see Mike come in. So I've got up. I said, oh, I. I, I <laughs> Hello, Mike. Nice to meet you. I said, uh, I'm a friend of Joe Egan's. I said, it's an honor to meet you. I said, would you like a drink? He went, nah. He said, uh, nah, you're all right. I said, listen, I don't mind buying everyone one. I said, I, you know, you're one of, my, one of my heroes. Nah, nah, you're all right, mate. I thought, you fuck, would you dumb me head in? I thought, anyway, so all of the fuck got around. He went, the white boy's getting out. I said, am I fuck? I can't remember exactly what I said, but I grabbed the ashtray. I thought, fuck this. Anyway, so it was a big commotion. They sort of all had him. Anyway, he was shouting and screaming some. I, I didn't say no more. I just had the, the glass ashtray. Man, I'm just going to smash it straight in there with the glass ashtray. About 40 body of security banks or whatever. So he went, you're lucky. I said, oh, boy, am I lucky? I said, I ain't fucking lucky. I said, he's expected to knock me out. Imagine if I'm not that cunt out. So I just thought, what have I got to lose? I'm going to get, you know, you're, you're expected to get knocked out, in you? So I just thought, fuck it. So I just grabbed the ashtray. But why? He's having it, the cunt. It, was, it wasn't... <laughs> It wasn't like 1996, right? Like it wasn't when, when the dude was out of his mind, but still. He was like, he was in a pub in England, probably in fucking Ipswich or something like that, causing problems. And he was like, you know, I, I sat him down. British people go hard in the pub. Isn't that a Waka Flocka Flame song? I go hard in the... Mother freaking pub. No shot that guy knocked out Mike Tyson. I mean, I, I hope that we're all on the same page there. That there's a very little chance that this middle-aged British guy knocked out Mike Tyson. Even past Mike Tyson's prime. But that does remind me. Did you see the video where the guy's talking to John Fetterman? And then a guy dressed like John Fetterman kicks him out of the, the function? Why? People in Gaza have been killed. Half are children. The Pope's calling for a ceasefire. The UN is called for it. I'm just asking you. You're a good guy. I voted for you. I know you're a nice guy. This is important. You need to leave. Here, can I give you a phone? Like what? I. What was he wearing, man? He, he was wearing like a bald cap and basketball shorts. He was like a <laughs> like a body double. <laughs> Why does John Fetterman stand like he's a Sith Lord? I think it's um, I think it's like tall guy problems. Even I'm not tall, but sometimes I don't know what to do with my hands. Like hands at your sides makes you feel like you're a fucking golem or something like that. And then hands in your pockets is like now it's Kevin James coded. You're like. But then you, some people do the thumbs in the pocket, and I'm like, all right, Brooks and done. You're trying a little too hard. But then if you put your hands behind your back, 
it's like Ajashi in the H Mart looking for like what the best persimmon to buy is. Like you're examining every single persimmon in the pile. And then arms in front of you is, you know I had to do it to him, Lucky Luciano. And then arms crossed is like, I'm not buying what you're selling, brother. Like every single bit of body language has an, an inference associated with it that's kind of annoying. Hands on the belt? Okay, Ted Cruz. And then the worst is if you're in like a group with a, a bunch of people, then like you hit a pose and then you look around and realize that every other motherfucker also has their arms crossed and you're like, well, I'm not going to be the, the eighth dude the arms cross. I got to start rocking a new pose. You find yourself out here like Jamie Lee Curtis, like one elbow kind of cocked on the side or something like that. I, I kind of switch based on the demographic that I'm talking to. If I'm talking to like 60 plus men, this is for my I do the, you know, I got to do it to them. Because A, they don't know what that is. And B, I think they find that like a respectful pose to be listening in. But you can't, if you're talking to someone from Gen Z, you can't hit him with the lucky Luciano. Because they're going to be like, what is this guy cooking? Uh, you're backstabbed? Who did a 180 so fast? Who do you think you are? Elvis Stoiko? Help. On your, on your bike! On your bike, chaps! <laughs> just check the settings on your phone while you're talking? No, this shit is disrespectful. Put your phone in your pocket. You know what it is, and you know, I'm glad you're here so we can talk about this openly. Is like you can't say to someone that you have shit taste in music, but you can like think it and know it. Someone will be like, oh, my favorite song is like fucking Hey There Delilah by the Plain White Tees. And in order to maintain a good ecosystem in chat, you got to be like, oh, really? That's not really my jam. But then like an hour later, you know, they're like, <laughs> do you like anything? Well, I just fucking don't like Hey There Delilah. It's fucking. We don't need to get into it, but I don't think it's very good. Oh, you don't like Hey There, Delilah? You know what it happens with me all the time? Is when I say I don't ever want to hear Don't Stop Believing by Journey again. People are like, come on! Bro, it's, it's like the best song. You don't like the best song? Come on! What do you like then? Like, they're immediately like, Oh, what's your favorite song then, motherfucker? Oh, some shit I've never heard of, probably, because I'm too busy at Applebee's. He likes Wolf Parade. Hey, hey, I told you that in confidence. Don't use that against me. Why is Applebee's catching strays? It's top of mind because I saw a tweet about that like 3.7 earthquake uh, in San Francisco and they interviewed somebody and they called him six year resident of, uh, of the Bay Area. And uh, he was talking about how he was slamming dollaritas at the Applebee's in Fisherman's Wharf when he felt the earthquake. And then, dude, I was, I realized San Francisco might be the only place on earth that has crazier internet denizens than Vancouver. Everybody in the comments was like, six year resident, lol. Like he's not like a real San Franciscan. The dude's lived there for, it's probably like a quarter of his life. He's not considered a, a San Francisco. He's only lived there for six years. Oh, but your parents fucked in Height Ashbury. And all of a sudden you're like the mayor of, of San Francisco. Make it make sense. I was conceived in the Cheesecake Factory in Pioneer Square. This dude's a fraud. Like, just relax. Also, everybody was like, 3.7, I remember when I was here for the fucking 8.7. I was like, oh, fucking people died. Shit was rattling off the walls. I'm like, what do you want him to do? He's getting interviewed by some fucking hack local news station outside of the Applebee's. What do you want him to be like? You want him to be as online as you are? First off, I know other people have been through earthquakes that are more serious than this. Shut the fuck up, bro. Stop commenting. Your brain is cooked. You can't need to talk to another human being, not a screen for like five minutes. You're like, <laughs> you're lost. No, the Dollarita dude did not vote for Mitt Romney. He's like 24. His ass was in the sixth grade during the 2012 presidential election, okay? He probably has no idea who Paul Ryan even is. 
Now, he knows everything about the Red Scare podcast. I'm not going to dispute that. It is crazy you could have watched Killers of the Flower Moon in this time. Did you, by the way, the perfect tweet drop this weekend. Oh, man. People talking about Killers of the Flower Moon needing an interruption or an intermission are so right. I just pissed myself watching the movie and now I gotta sit in it for another three hours and 15 minutes. So good. It's perfect comedy. What's the joke? Well, the movie's three hours and 15 minutes long, I guess. That's what I inferred from it as the comedy enjoyer. Man, Librarian had that shit on a damn macro. You see the Prezzo tweet? It was quote tweeting a, um... A tweet that said, uh, Channing Tatum and Zoe Kravitz are now engaged. And it said their baby is about to have the shortest hair ever. I think that's a... The rare retweetable Prezzo joke. I'm, I'm, I'm a noted Prezzo respecter, but that one was like family friendly. <laughs> it's, it's not very common. Channing Tatum does have unbelievably short hair. It's like his hair. I know how this sounds. I'm not saying this just to make it a joke, but Channing Tatum has hair that's shorter than mine. He's not bald, but he has like shorter hair than a bald person. It's I've never seen anyone else with Channing Tatum's haircut. Like it's not shaved. Something, something about it is, it is, it's like the lingerie of hair. That's a great way to describe it. I'm not saying he's weird looking. Like, I think he's a very handsome guy. But his hair is like, I don't know how to describe it. It's not negative hair, but it's like such a small, you know, it's like if you asked your friend for a potato chip. If, if he said no, you would be like, all right, fuck me, I guess. But if he gave you like, he reached in the bag and he gave you like one little crumb, you would be like, that's even worse. That's even less chip than just saying none chip. Cause it's like, I've, I'm, I know I'm consuming chip, but I can't even notice that I'm consuming chip. It's imperceptible. He has like an amount of hair that is infinitesimal. And in that way, it's actually to the human mind, less than zero somehow. I don't know how it, it's just weird. He's a handsome guy, obviously. I'm just saying, I've, I've never seen hair like that before. I get the metaphor, but it makes no sense. Me, when something makes sense, that makes no sense. I get it, though. I appreciate it, though. You're playing the foil. I'm being the silly guy. That means you have to be the straight guy who's like, what you're saying doesn't make sense. So I appreciate you playing the role. Haunted ass controller. It sounds like me swiping on Tinder. Is it sound? You playing? You not playing that shit? And like, do not disturb. You got your Bluetooth earbuds in. Did you ever see the infographic that the guy made of using uh, Tinder in San Francisco? So it started. It was like a flowchart, and it started with like the number of uh, profiles he viewed, which was like a hundred thousand. And then it was like it split into the ones that he said yes to and the ones he said no to. So he said yes to like 40% or something. And then like out of the 40%, the ones that said yes to him was like 2,000 people. And then out of the 2,000, it's like the ones that he sent a message to was like 1,000. And the ones that replied to that was like 60. And then the ones that he like made a date with, like plans to go out was like... Uh, 31 and then the ones that he actually got on a date with was two and then the ones that he got a second date with was one holy man maybe spend less time making flow charts and work on your damn riz or something i don't know i'm kind of out of the pool i don't know what it's like i'm just trying to make a joke at his expense anyway modern dating isn't that hard you just have to be kind of tall that's I mean, listen, I, don't, I wouldn't know because I'm not dating in the modern times and also I'm not kind of tall. In fact, like 10 years ago, I was average, but I would say now I'm kind of short. Not short, but kind of short. 
I'm definitely short enough that like there are, you know, other dads that I meet where I'm like, how's the weather up there? And then they say pretty good stretch and I say, all right, tiny. And then we have hardcore, passionate lovemaking <laughs> sessions. <laughs> Because you can't bottle that kind of chemistry, okay? Question marks? What? Two dads in relationships with wives can't also... I don't know. It's up to you guys, really. I had to take my headset off for a second. I hope he didn't say anything about two dads having... Ramp. I had to take my headphones off for a second. I hope his riz wasn't so bad he blanked himself. <laughs> Me returning after a two and a half hour long bathroom break midway through Killers of the Flower Moon. So what did I miss? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to piss people off. <laughs> oh, man. I was still, I was thinking about that tweet yesterday, the one that's like, all the intermission stuff about Killers of the Flower Moon is true. I pissed myself midway through the movie. Now I gotta sit in it for another three hours and 15 minutes. Yes, Commander! Is this the radio edit? With so much drama in the LBC, it's kinda hard being Snoop D-O-double-G. But I, somehow, some way, keep coming up with zzz, 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 like every single day. May I kick a little something for the G's and make a zzz, zzz, as I zzz, 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 because my mama ain't home. I got zzz, in the living room zzz, and they ain't leaving till six in the six in the morning. So what you want to do, huh? I got a pocket full of zzz, and my zzz, do too. So zzz, we don't love them. Zzz, so we gon' trees up zzz, while you zzz, rolling down the street. Me at the rap dentist. I'm gonna plus to you. <laughs> <laughs>